It's finally happened. It took 11 long weeks, but it's finally here. I punched my 10th Subway sandwich card at Subway. <laughs> yes, free sub for Tino tomorrow. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm just joking. There obviously won't be a tomorrow. <laughs> because today, this happened. Preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. President. No matter how many times you watch that, I don't think you'll ever get used to it. It's like seeing your dad's dick. <laughs> Like, I knew it was gonna be there, but it's still upsetting. <laughs> One of the main things Donald Trump has promised uh, is that he will drain the swamp. He said he will drain the swamp that is Washington. And when you look at his inauguration crowd compared to President Obama's, you can see Trump kept that promise on day one. <laughs> Washington is drained. Mission accomplished, Trump. <laughs> oh, if you, if you did miss the inauguration or uh, if you wanna suffer one more time, Let's do a quick recap. So, uh, basically, it starts uh, just before noon, Eastern time, and here we see President-elect <laughs> Donald Trump <laughs> approaching the dais as hellfire spontaneously bursts from Earth below, um, <laughs> followed by members of Congress performing the traditional wail of their submission to the new overlord. Yes, the peaceful transition of power. <laughs> I'm just joking, I'm joking, guys, of course, I'm joking. I mean, it was much worse than that. <laughs> First, obviously, Trump got some formalities out of the way. Chief Justice Roberts, President Carter, President Clinton, President Bush, President Obama, fellow Americans, and people of the world, thank you. Why would he be thanking people of the world? <laughs> it's not like they voted or participated. Oh. <laughs> I get it, I get it. Now, here's the thing. Historically, and not just in America, most functioning presidents generally try to make their inauguration speech one of unity and positive vision. And you would hope the 45th president would have brought some of that, but it turns out hope was the exact wrong thing to have. America's infrastructure has fallen into disrepair and decay. One by one, the factories shuttered and left our shores. Mothers and children trapped in poverty, rusted out factories, scattered like tombstones across the landscape. And the crime, and the gangs, and the drugs. We all bleed the same red blood. The ravages, destroying, ripped, robbed our country. This American carnage stops right here and stops right now. Um, did anybody have carnage, blood, and decay on their inauguration speech bingo card? <laughs> did anybody have that? Yeah, yeah? Is that the first five minutes of a presidency or a Terminator movie? What the hell is that? <laughs> blood and decay, the bones. <laughs> you know, no matter how we feel about today, at least we know how Trump will remember it. January 20th, 2017, will be remembered as the day the people became the rulers of this nation again. Well, actually, I have a feeling January 20th, 2017, will be the day time travelers go back to <laughs> to try and save the future. <laughs> That's what I think we'll remember it as. In fact, in fact, around, around 11.30 today, part of me was expecting Marty McFly to show up like, Doc! I'm so glad you're here. We gotta stop him. <laughs> For the last time, I'm not Doc. I'm Bernie Sanders. <laughs> Why does this keep happening to me? <laughs> but, but for many people, the truth is, today's speech didn't matter. What really did and what really hit home was once the ceremony was over and the Trumps were escorting the Obamas to their helicopter one final time. And they flew off into the sky directly at Lester Holt. <laughs> Look at Lester, he's like, are they coming for me? What's happening? It's almost like Obama was flying, like, I'm leaving and I'm taking all the black people with me. Come on, Lester, come on. 
And while the Obamas took to the sky, uh, the Bidens took to the rails. Yes, look at that. I love that Joe Biden is just holding one suitcase, like he's been living out of a single bag these past eight years. <laughs> of everything that happened, though, for me, the person who most captured the feeling of the day was First Lady Michelle Obama. It was all over her face, all over her face the whole time. It started in the morning at the White House when Melania gave Michelle a gift that she clearly didn't want. <laughs> clearly did not want. She just hands it over to Obama. And look at Obama, look at him. He's like, uh, just, uh, throw this anywhere. I'm moving, it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, throw it in the trash. <laughs> and, and by the way, by the way, uh, in case you were wondering what was inside that box, it was just a tiny note from Melania that said, help. <laughs> The entire day, Michelle Obama's face was the barometer for most of America's feelings. Look at that face. Look at that. She's not in... Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. Look at that face. That face... is every emotion rolled into one. That's like... That's like, bye, Felicia, boy, bye. I'd like to speak to your manager. I'm so done. All rolled into one. And you know what? It's not hard to imagine why Michelle was feeling that way. Because not only did Donald Trump move into the White House, but Republicans now control the House, the Senate, 32 state legislatures, and 33 state governors. Today almost felt like that scene in a Disney movie where the villain gets the upper hand. You know that feeling you get? Like, remember when Mufasa died and then Scar was the king? Yeah, I was there that day. <laughs> Damn you, Disney. Because today feels just like that. It feels like a Disney down day. Because Trump controls everything, which makes me sad. Aww. But on the other hand, <laughs> it also means that... No more excuses. No more excuses. It's time to take your red cap off and rarely do shit. Cause if you fail now, you'll look like douches. And then I promise you'll be hated like Ted Cruz is. There's no more blaming, no liberal shaming. And you can sign in any law, so we're all waiting. Though Trump is frightening to us all, let's see him build that wall if the bricks fit in his tiny little hands. You've got Paul Ryan as your bitch, and in the Senate, you've got Mitch. You've got the left in full retreat and a SCOTUS empty seat. You're the boss of the military. Now that I say it, that sounds scary, but it means that now we'll see just what the truth is. So Donald J. Trump, no more excuses. No more excuses. Let's see you do what you've been preaching all along. Now that the Kenyan Muslim's gone, it's time for you to carry on and make this country great again. No excuses. No excuses. None. No excuses. Hey there. Thanks for subscribing to our new YouTube channel. Uh, you're probably thinking, but I didn't. I know, which is fine, but now you're thinking about subscribing. You should really just subscribe. Just do it. Subscribe. Who said that? Subscribe. Who's saying these things? Subscribe now. What?